Therefore I will deliver you. I will set you securely on high because you have known my name. You'll call upon me and I will answer you. I I'm not talking about Leo's age, long life. And that's a long life. But when I see that, I see eternity. <laughs> that's a long, long life. <laughs> so Father, we thank you and bless you and honor you, oh God. Because you're good and your mercy endures forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. Now suffering may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning, on that getting up morning, oh God. Lord, will we fly away, oh God. Out of, oh God, the matrix. Out of the program huh, that you've designed for us to get back to you. So help us see, Keep us, help us hear, help us understand your plan, ultimately. It's all about how much you love us. Yes. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen. 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 Hallelujah, amen. God is so good, isn't he? Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad, I will rejoice in it. I'd like to share with you tonight some of the things that have sustained me with my relationship with Christ and my relationship with, with God and, and with the Spirit of God, as well as the angels of God. You know, sometimes when we think of God, we think of only the Trinity. And Jesus is coming back Amen. with, the Bible says, his mighty angels, and he's also coming in the clouds. Amen. And we don't realize who we are and what God is doing in us. We have this treasure in an earthen vessel and we don't know what it looks like. We don't, what, what is God doing inside of us? In John chapter five, verse You search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. One of the things the Lord shared with me when I first got saved is I had to find myself in his word. Jesus went to the temple at 12. And when his mom came to, to take him back, he said, I was about my father's business. But he didn't realize it was not the set time and appointed time. But one day, why, in one of this service, the book of Isaiah was given to him. And as he began to read the book of Isaiah, the Holy Spirit said unto him, that's you. That's you. Search the scriptures because they speak of me. But the question is, are we bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh? For if I am a part of Jesus, then the scriptures are speaking of me as well. 
And so I identify with his word. I actually believe that I am bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. It is Hebrews chapter 10, verses 5 and verse 6. Therefore, when he came into the world, he said, Sacrifice and an offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. And birth offerings and sacrifices for sin you have no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come, and the volume of the book is written of me to do your will, O God. Many Christians cannot do the will of God because they haven't found in the volume of the book what that will is. It is written of me. It is written of me in this volume of this book what the will of God is for my life. Mm -hmm. Search the scriptures and you will find yourself inside of Christ. Mm -hmm. We have so many verses in the New Testament about being in him, putting him on, yeah. walking in him, but we find ourselves outside of him, asking him from the outside, what, are your, what is your will? But it's already written in the volume of the book. I believe many don't want to know what his will from the book is because they don't delight in doing that will. Because if you delight in knowing the will of God, you will find that will. Continue. Previously saying, sacrifice and offerings, birth offerings, and offering for sin, you did not desire, nor have pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. He takes away the requirement of doing stuff by a law that he may replace it for those who would do it from the heart. It's written. His word is established in heaven and it cannot be shaken. Can you find yourself in Isaiah? Can you find yourself in Jeremiah? Amen. So the Lord told me, he said, you go find yourself. And I found myself in Jeremiah. Chapter 1, verse 5. Before I formed thee in your mother's belly, and before you came out of her womb, I had already sanctified you a prophet to the nations. I found my calling in the word of God. Amen. Who are you? What are you? Jesus had to find himself. At 12, he was already searching. And at 12 was the first time he said, Joseph is not my father. Joseph is not my father. I must be about my father's business. And he continued to look, what is the will of God for me? John 7, verse 17. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it's from God or whether I speak on my own authority. Doing his will, after presenting your body as a living sacrifice, all of a sudden teachings begin to come alive. Amen. Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, yeah. 
They are spirit and their life. How do you make the word of God living? When I first got saved, I wanted to memorize the whole Bible. So I would just go verse after verse and, and, and had all these verses. And, and I was in the computer field. And back then, the, the computer papers were, you know, was large. And one day, uh, uh, the Lord told me, you're trying to memorize too many verses, he told me. He said, I want you to do, just take one verse at a time and, and memorize it until you feel it. I want you, and so I, 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 I got one verse and I just said it and I'd be driving to work and I just kept saying it and saying it and, and finally I felt it. So I realized that I could minister where people could feel the word of God. He did not speak with, like the Pharisees, but he spoke with authority. He spoke with power. There's power in the word of God. And when that word become a part of you, bone of your bone and flesh of your flesh, then God will bring to you the revelation of his word. I found then that I could start reading, and, it, and, and when I got to, to something that God wanted me to feel, it came off the pages. I know I'm not the only one here tonight that had been reading, and all of a sudden, hey, 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 this old I mean, I mean, you're like, oh my God, oh my God. And you felt it. That means that verse was speaking to you, and it wanted to become a part of you. So when we put on the word, we're putting on a particular scripture that now become a part of us that it, 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 it's, 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 what's the word? Uh, Cleave. It, it's, 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 it cleaves, but it's, it's, it's mixed into our genes. It becomes a part of our DNA. And so you then become a living epistle. And you are seen and read by everybody because now you are the word. Yeah. <laughs> so when Paul said, you are a living ep epistle, he was talking to people that he saw alive and the word was in them. Yeah. See, God was in Christ. Reconciling, reconciling the world to himself. Yeah. And when they said to Jesus, look, Blessed is your mother who raised you and nursed you, and blessed are you. And they were trying to tell him how he was good. He said, you don't understand. Yeah. I'm not good. But my father, who's in me, he doeth the things. I only say what I hear him say, which means I had to get it from the word. Yeah. I only do what I see him do, which means I had to see what he was doing. That's why when he taught them to pray, he said, pray, thy will be done on earth as you see it done in heaven. Yeah. He knew that a part of him was not here. And he knew that that other part was up there in heaven. See, it was impossible for the whole word to come to earth because the earth cannot contain all the word of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God in his word only sent a piece of him known as a seed. His whole body did not come. Only a piece of sperm from that body came into Mary. And he knew the other part of him was in heaven. And so he says, what is thy will? Paul was said this way in the Colossians. He said, if you then be risen with Christ, then seek the things which are above. For your life is hid in Christ, whose life is hid in God. You find the will of God from heaven, not from earth. 
because it is heaven, it's in heaven where he has blessed you with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Christ is no longer here, but you are. And he's put his seed in you so that like he looked for the Father, he looked for the Word, he looked for the Holy Ghost. He spent time seeking God's will. You can't ask what the will of God is and then don't seek it. Jesus. Amen. The asking come after the seeking yeah. and not before. Yeah. Because he's a rewarder of those, of those that diligent seek him. Seek him. And he says, I will be found of you yeah. when I see you searching for me with all your heart with all your soul and your strength and your mind, then I will tell you my will. We sound spiritual when we say, I wish I knew what the will of God is. <laughs> Did you beg for it? Blessed are the poor in spirit. That word poor means it supplicate. Did you beg him to say, I need to know what your will is? Did you knock and, 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 and keep on knocking? Did you seek and keep on seeking? Did you ask and keep on asking? That's what he was teaching his disciple. Don't ask and walk away. You ask until you hear something. Don't knock and walk away because the door he doesn't answer. You know, uh, when, when I was um, burying my mom and at the service there, uh, we had the service in the Catholic Church, and I, I, told, the, I told the priest after was that, that same Catholic Church I was raised in. And, and when I was a, a young man, my father always taught me that God was my father, but we were very poor. And my father had passed away, and so I decided, we, since we had no food, to go to the priest, the rectory there, knock on the door, and ask for some food. But you know what? I, I, I knocked, and nobody came to the door. I kept knocking. And I mean, I, knock, I don't know how long I, I, I knocked on the door, but I, I would not give up because that was my father's house in my mind at my age. Finally, the priest come to the door. He, was, he looked at me. I'm a little too, I was so young. And he looked at me. He said, son, what can I do? I said, I said daddy, we ain't got no food. <laughs> <laughs> do you know they actually have the title father? Since one father was gone, then the other father had to be the father in the church. Hmm. And he said to me, he said, I can't help you. Jesus. And, and, and that, that didn't bother me. <laughs> because, you know, I, the children learn how to beg when they come to their parents. And so I kept on begging. I said, um, we come to this church, we go to this church, and um, I said, Father, we ain't got no food. And he looked at me, he went back and came back with a whole ham. I went home with that ham. <laughs> My mama asked me where that ham come from, I didn't tell her. Because I, I didn't want her to know I went down to the church and asked for that ham. The same way I, as a child I asked for some food, when I got saved, I, I wanted to know the will of God. And I would not be turned away until my father, which art in heaven, would tell me what that will is. That's how Jesus taught the disciples to pray. They said, teach us to pray the way you pray. They heard him praying. He didn't give them a prayer for them. He gave them his prayer. It's called the Lord's Prayer, but that's not correct. It's, 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 it's it's our prayer because we are part. So he said, pray this way, our father. And he didn't say my father. Amen. See, you don't know you're in the prayer. He didn't say, this is how I pray. My father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. No, he said, look, I was always praying the word our. And I wasn't going to tell you the prayer until you ask and want to be the part of the owl. 
Do you really want to be a part of the our prayer for our Lord, for our Father that's not on earth, but he's in heaven? Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You want to know the will of God? Get filled. Get filled in the Holy Ghost. Build up your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost because that's what Jesus did. Yeah. He would get alone. He would go to the mountain. Wherever he went, he got in a place where he could say, I need to know your will. John 4, 34. I know people like eating. The Old Testament, they had things known as meat offerings, peace offerings. And let me show you the New Testament meat offering. Jesus said to them, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. They said he hadn't eaten. And he says, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me. That's the New Testament meat offering where you do the will of God from the heart. And they were saying to him, you haven't eaten. He, he said, you don't know what food is. You don't know what really sustained us and give us the victory over sin and o o o over all of the things that war against our soul. When you find yourself in the will of God, temptation is weakened. One who practices the will of God don't have time for sin. Mm -hmm. You can't find sin in the will of God. And so when you find that will and practice that will, oh my God, the joy of salvation. What a joy. So Jesus told us this in John 6, verse 38. For I have come down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. You know, this is a strange verse, and, and I want to try to help explain it to you. He said he had come down, which means he was never from here. This is the problem with Christianity. We think all of us is from here. The only part of you that is from here is your soul and your body. But as Solomon said in Ecclesiastes, the spirit that is in you came from the mouth of God. And he said, no one knows the mystery of when God put the spirit into the body. And therefore, he says, when we die, we give up the ghost. See, listen very carefully. And God took the dirt from the ground, and he said, it came from him and not from the ground. There is a part of you that want to get back up where it came from. And so this is what happened. Every time one of us die, the same thing happens. They say we give up the ghost. We call it the last breath, but it's not the breath. It's your spirit going back to God. Amen. Your body stays here. Your soul stays here. Jesus said, fear not those that can destroy your body. Rather, fear him who can destroy body and soul in hell. Notice he didn't say anything about the spirit going there. Because it never goes there. Solomon says, the spirit of the animals when they die go down to the ground. 
but the spirit of man returns back to God who gave it. Amen. You must connect to heaven while your body and soul resist it. So Paul says, one part of me wants to do the will of God. The other part fights against that part. So when you want to do the will of God, you will fight, fight against yourself. A voice will come say, something on TV. You're hungry? Don't you need to cut the grass? All kind of things come against you when you want to do the will of God. We're not talking about Satan. We're talking about you. And we have the tendency to yield to ourselves. Then we say to God, you know, I asked you, but you didn't tell me. And God knows that you wanted something else more than him and his will. Matthew 7, 21, this is an interesting verse about God's will. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, should enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. This is where he says, many shall come unto me at that day and say to the Lord, did not I prophesy, thinking that prophesizing was the will of God. <laughs> Many will come to me that day and say, you know, I was out there as an evangelist. I was, I was healing the sick and raising the dead. And he said, Many think that's doing the will of God. See, people think doing the will of God is religious things. And so when they talk to God, they're thinking God is going to reply for them to do some missionary work. <laughs> so he said, many going to come unto me at that day. And they're actually going to say, Lord, Lord, I did your will. I was involved in ministry. And he said, I will say to them, you depart from me. I never knew you. you I never needed you on a missionary field. I didn't need you out there. I needed you raising your kids. <laughs> I needed you spending the time with something or someone else. I, I needed you to do, to do my will. We, 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 we pray sometimes to God, asking for his will, hoping it will fit into our will. So he says, read that again. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, should enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I would declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. So he considers out of the will of God as lawlessness. That's kind of scary. To go after the world and all of these things and to lose our soul. After doing missionary work. All of the years of ministry. I learned to wait on the Lord. You know, I was in an organization 30 some years ago and I was so happy to be a minister in that organization. And one morning I was at my morning prayer and the Lord said to me, he said, I need you to get up, get in your car and go to a house on, uh, that's located on a farm. And there you will meet other ministers that are gonna take you to Washington because you're now leaving this organization. And so, I got in the car. Now, I didn't know what exit. I didn't know what house. And I drove around for hours. Mm -hmm. Finally, he finally told me, this is the exit. I took the exit. Then he told me, this is the road. 
I took the road and I saw a house way back on, on this farm. And I went down there. No, I saw no cars when I got there. I knocked on the door and no one was there. So I sat in the, in the car waiting. No one came. I left and he told me, go back. I said, a long time again. I left. He said, go back. Finally, night came. And I was there on that property at night. No lights because nobody was home. They put no lights on. Finally, I saw car lights coming up the driveway. The car came and an a, 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 a older white man came up. And when he saw me, you know, I'm 6'2". I'm in pretty good shape. And I was younger then. I was in better shape. So I, <laughs> he figured this was... This was not the day the Lord has made for him because he was getting <laughs> robbed. And he, he said, can I help you? I said, yes. Just morning in prayer, the Lord told me to come here and I would meet men of God. And, and I told him, and somebody here would help me get to Washington. And he said, well, I am here and more men are getting ready to come behind me and all of us are pastors. He said, come in and tell me again. <laughs> so he opened the door and I went in and one by one, these pastors from the, in, the, in the Dallas Fort Worth River was coming in. All of them older men. I was in, I was in, I was in my uh, uh, 30s, early 30s. And, and, and they, I was the only black person there. And they sit down and they was trying to ask, say, who is that guy, who's that guy, who's that guy? <laughs> So they made the, they put the chairs around and it was a prayer meeting. So they began to pray and they prayed for maybe an hour and a half. And at the end of the prayer, they, they you know, got the coffee and the cookies and donuts and they were, and so they got into a, 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 a two of them, the, the older two got into this religious sword fight, you know, about a certain doctrine. So one of them decided to be funny with the other one and say, well, let's ask this guy here. And they didn't know I was an expert in the word of God. And so I said, well, you're both are right, but there's a scripture in Isaiah that will put both of these truths together. And they say, what do you mean? I said, and I pulled a quarter out of my pocket. I say, on one side, you see this face. I said, that's you. On the other side, you see this face. And I said to the pastor, that's you. And then I put the quarter on the table and made it stand up on the side that no one saw. The edge of the corn. And I said, told him, turn to Isaiah with chapter and verse. And I said, read that. And this is what one of them said. I've been waiting for that answer for over 50 some <laughs> years. Boy, you just a kid and you telling me you, you know that. And another one said, well, I got a question. And another one said that. And so one by one, I asked their question, answered their question. Then they said, well, what are you here? And I told them about that morning prayer. And then one pastor said, I'm going up to Washington. You can go with me. Later on, I would leave that church, and they pulled away all the offerings and the tithes. And so I couldn't pay my rent, and I couldn't do that. But then there was knocks on the door. One person I didn't know him at all, never seen him before in my life. He said, I was in prayer and the Holy Spirit told me to come here and he was shaken. He, he, had, he, he poured out a check for the exact amount of the rent. See, the will of God was for me to leave an organization that I was happy in doing his will there. But at the set time and at the appointed time, it was time for me to leave and go back to Washington. Mm. Do God delight in burnt offering and sacrifices as much as they do in doing his will? In burnt offerings and sacrifice, I have no delight. I could have stayed in that organization and, 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 and continue to prosper and be a blessing to many, but the will of God was for me to go to Washington and deal with the crack addicts and the alcoholics and the homeless and to go back to those people where I spoke a language fluently and change the life of many, but which was really only a few. 
Sometimes we think the will of God is to have some large ministry, some huge ministry. That's not the will of God. A little less than a year after being in Washington, I got a letter from one of the, a, a pastor that let me use his building free for two years to have a church and never charged me a dollar. He had offered me a, 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 a ministry in Wyoming where I, I would have been taken care of for the rest of my life. And he had been chased out of the island of Madagascar. And so he had, could only do his missionary work in Africa. And there he met this woman that was also a missionary, and they wanted to, to do the will of God together, but not have sex. So they said, well, we can't, we can't travel, so they married just to do missionary work. <laughs> so nobody would say that anything was wrong inappropriate. or inappropriate. And so he wrote me because there was a revolution in Madagascar, and they asked him to come back. And in his letter, he now had one million souls. And he said, I need you to come here. The church, the smallest church there was 10,000 members. He said, I need you because I know who you are. And I need you to help me with the work here because I know your testimony. And when I prayed, the Lord told me to stay with the 20-some people that I had. <laughs> what was the will of God for me? The few and not the many. We look for the will of God in things that make us comfortable, things that will bring us pride, things that will lift our ego up. But God resists the proud, <laughs> and he give grace to the humble. Now, I know a lot of y'all will be able to quote this to me. What was King David best known for when he came to God. Anyone know? I can't, don't be ashamed. He said that out. He was after God's own heart. Let's look at something about that. <laughs> Psalms 51 verse 12. Y'all know Psalm 51 is when he fell. But watch this. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Oh, with a willing spirit. This is a strange verse, but when quoted from the New Testament, Acts 13, 22, it takes on a new meaning. And when he had removed him, he raised up for them David as king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. You never knew the whole purpose of David's heart in it was, I delight to do thy will. Mm -hmm. It's written in the volume of the book. Mm -hmm. And so whatever God asked David to do, he did it willingly. You know, people say Solomon built the temple, but Solomon didn't provide the material. <laughs> How strong was this willing spirit that God had given David because when David had backslidden in Psalm 51, he said, restore unto me the joy of your salvation and give me back that willing spirit. Mm -hmm. Don't let it be a pain to serve you. Salvation should be joy. Even when you suffer to do it. That's why Peter said, count it all joy when you fall into trials. Why? Don't you know what trials is going to do to your soul? You have any idea? It pleased God 
to send Satan on Job. It pleased him. It pleased him. It pleased him to bruise his only begotten son. He, he said, I, I'm pleased. Why? Because I want you to see I can hit him and he still find joy in serving me. You know I can hit my dog and he still wag his tail. <laughs> you know I can kick him and he'll come back, put his head down and his tail will wave. And then I can tell him anything and he gets happy. It don't take him but a second to forget he got hit. So Jesus says, before he got hit, not my will. I know you're getting ready to hit me. He said, Father, if possible, can you take this away from me and give me another assignment? And then he said, but yet for this cause came I into the world. You know, when Jesus got on the cross and he said that Eli, Eli, Labas, Sebastiani, Christianity paints that as a weak moment. My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? But Laba Sebastiani has no interpretation in any language. Jesus already knew that he was going to be crucified. He, in the volume of the book, he already knew everything that was the way. He said, no man can take my life. I lay it down. The why in that word has no translation for why in any language on earth. It means for this purpose I came into the world. That's why John, when he saw him, he said, behold, the Lamb of God, the take away the sin. He already saw the Lamb, and the, and, and the Lamb was going to walk for four more years. He already knew that that was the Lamb of God. And so when he got on the cross, he called for Eli. That's the name of a person, personal. And that Eli, the translator told you, was God. My God, my God, who is God? Eli, Eli. Eli is the high priest in the Old Testament. He's calling for the high priest because he said, he's telling them, come and examine me. See if you find any rebellion. See if you find anything that says, I did not want to do the will of God. Jesus. For this purpose, I came into the world to make my life an offering. In burnt offering and sacrifices, you have no delight. But it's written in the volume of the book, a body. You have prepared for me to do thy will. And I delight to do it. I delight to do it. It took three hours of prayer. In the garden, he spent three hours. First, he had all 12 to pray for him the first hour. When the 12... Then he told the three. He walked further, and the second hour, he said, you three. When he came back and saw the three, he said, oh, my God. That's when he's sweating blood. He was determined that if it means sweating blood to find the will of God, then he was sweating. Even though nobody would pray with him and join him in prayer for finding the will of God for the next day. Because that was the Passover. He had to make sure, is this the right Passover? Do I have to wait another year? Because three Passovers had already gone by. Remember the first Passover? The first Passover, he went, turned the tables over. In the story of the table turnover, it was a Passover. Make not my father's house a den of thieves. Get this out of here. He thought, okay, I surely gonna get to put the devil after turning the tables off, getting rid of the dove. They didn't bother him. <laughs> it wasn't a set time. So he had to go search the scriptures again. People who search the scriptures know the truth. Jochebed, the mother of Moses, the daughter of Levi. Levi had three sons, but he had one daughter. 
Jochebed. And God kept her alive all the way for the, the child, the third child she had is Moses. And when she looked at the child, she said, the chosen one. And so she said, how did God save a world? Because I only have to save a kingdom, a ark. So she built a miniature ark, a model of the big one. And then she placed the child. And she says, I'm trusting the God of the water. And she put him in the water. And so they named him Moses, God of the sea. And the, one of the first things he did was turn the water to blood. And when it came time to get them to the promised land, he hit the water that his mother put him in. And it lifted up as if Moses himself was the God of the water. Because Jochebed, his mother, says the will of God is to put him in this water and let's see who house he go to and the very enemies of her soul would raise the deliverer and she would get the nursing you talking about doing the will of God yeah. <laughs> you can't teach that yeah. you can't teach that read that again Verse, verse 22. I mean, 13. And when he had removed him, he raised them up for them, David is king, to whom also he gave testimony and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Why did he remove Saul? Because the prophet said to Saul, go kill this king and everything he got. And he disobeyed doing the will of All God. Of All of the will of God. And when Samuel came, he heard the bleating of the animals. He said, what meaneth this? And Saul said, the people made me do it. And he said, you have heard. And then he grabbed, Saul grabbed his garment and tore it. And he said, so shall the Lord rend the kingdom from you. And give it to one who would do his, all, all his will. Hmm. When I'll be at my office sometimes and the Lord say, get up, go here. And I'll be walking down the street. He say, see that young lady? Catch her. And tell her what I had to tell her. I said, ma'am, I don't know who you are, but the Lord told me you were getting ready to commit suicide. And then she would just fall to her feet and howl. And he said, I love you in ways you have no way. No, no, you don't, you have no idea. Doing the will of God. You know, I had someone, you know, because people would knock on my door and get checks and stuff, and I never met him before. One day, uh, uh, I was in the house I'm living in, and the Lord said, go get your checkbook. I said, get my checkbook. He said, remember what, I, what people did for you? He said, and then get your checkbook and write out a check and... Uh, and then call this particular person and tell him to come pick up that check. And the person came and he said, he did work on, around my property. And he came and he said, um, hey, Mr. Holly, hey, Mr. Holly. He was, you know, one of the illegals. <laughs> he said, hey, Mr. Holly, hey, Mr. Holly, yeah, 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 yeah. What you call me for? And I put the check in his hand and he just howled. He just howled. He just howled. Then he told me, all the electric would turn off. They had no food. And that check was going to cover everything. His house note, his food, and anything else. And I said, that's not a loan. That's a gift. Later on, a year later, my, my oldest sister, who passed away last year, had a need. And she couldn't afford to do what her need was. And I called him and I said, hey, I need you to help me with my sister. And he went and he took care. I still paid them for that. But it was way below what it would have cost. Doing the will of God comes in so many different colors. 
in so many different ways. Acts 2, verse 41. Do you know the day of Pentecost is not what you really think it was? <laughs> you know, Acts 2, verse 41. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. Now, we, we quote that verse, we read that verse, but you don't see the power of that verse. There were, in Jerusalem, people from all nations to come practice the Feast of Pentecost. And you know, God has scattered the 10 tribes to all parts of the earth. And so these people still knew that the, the temple had been built, rebuilt in Jerusalem. So they were coming to, to worship the Lord for the Feast of Pentecost. And Peter got up and gave a message to ask them to change their religion that they would devote at. And you know they did it gladly and willfully. 3,000 of them gave up religion and gave up law for grace. In one day, 3,000 people said no to law after going to the temple for Pentecost. After doing their vows and doing everything, they heard people speaking in their language. So they said, what meaneth this? And a lot, the crowd just came running to hear what was being said. And Peter stood up among the 12 and he said, I'm, I'm going to tell you what's being said. Joel said that in a lot of days, he will pour out a spirit on all flesh, on your sons and on your daughters, on your men servants and your maid servants. And he said, that was a promise. And they said, oh my God. So he said, repent that God refreshing will come from heaven. Be baptized. And he said, and receive the same thing we got. Why? Because that Peter that Peter knew that in Psalms 110, when the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand till I make your enemies a footstool for your feet, that his people will be made willing in that power. Yeah. From the wound of Don, an entity that name is only mentioned once in scripture, right there. They will be made willing from an aspect of God's Holy Ghost that they will be birthed from that spirit of God. Because anyone coming out of her womb, they will know the joy of salvation and they will know the joy of doing the will of all the will of God. So the Lord said, Sit at my right hand till I send dawn. And so Jesus says, tarry till you be endued with power from above. But he could have stopped there, but he says, I need to mock y'all. The same way God did when he did the first man. And man became a living soul. But when he did that, they became quickening spirits, mock for the dawn. And when the day of Pentecost came and she came in that whirlwind, she said, only fill those who have been mocked with the breath of God. You thought Jesus just breathed on them? No, God breathed on the first Adam, and then that Adam was breathed going to breathe on all of those that will become a sign and want to behold I and the children that you have given me are for signs and wonder throughout all Israel. So he told them, carry to you be endued with power. For when it comes, it will lead you, it will guide you into all truth. 
It will convince you of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. And, and the stuff that I told you that you still didn't understand, I had many things to say to you, but if you can't understand it, you can't grasp it. When the Holy Ghost comes, the patience of that spirit will slowly get you understanding and doing all the will of God. Yes. Yes. Acts 4 says the same thing to Acts 2. When the next group come, it said, my God, they came willingly. And so a fear came on those that did not want to do it willingly. You know, when David went to build that temple, he gave willingly from his resources. And all the people saw David, people saw David giving, giving to the, for the temple, they started giving. David got down and he cried and he, he howled to God. He said, what kind of people have you given me that will give to the house of God from their heart willingly? What kind of people did you send to me in the cave? I thought they was discontented. I thought they were discouraged. I thought, I thought they were distressed. But David became a captain over them in doing the will of God. People are watching us. Is God real? Is God real? Acts 1, verse 8. I quoted the verse, but I like but reading it. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Jesus knew Psalms 110. He knew that because he was going to sit at the right hand of the Father, he knew it was time for the power to make people willing in the day of that power. And he said, you will become a witness when this power get on you of doing the will of God. So he says, power will become on you. Continue. Now, when he had spoken these things when, while they watched, he was taken up in a cloud received him out of sight. He said, I did mine. Yeah. Now it's on us. It's on us to fulfill and become a member of his body, bone of his bone, and flesh of his flesh. Luke 1 Verse 78. So we see verses in the Bible, but we don't know how to put it together. Who is this dawn? Who is this morning? Who womb do we come out of through, that we do the will of God? Through the tender mercies of our God, with which the day spring. Or the day star. From on high have visited us. So we didn't know that the dawn had already visited us. We, we didn't know that. We didn't know that we would come out of her womb. <laughs> Only those coming out of her do it willingly. The others need a law. The others need law. I don't need God law to tell me his will. I was sharing with Leo and him earlier uh, before we had this service that one, one of the days that the Lord took me to heaven, he, he said, I'm going to take you to work with me. And I, I didn't know he was still working. I had no idea he was still working. And so that day I, I sat on his lap and watched him and the kind of work he did. And when I got back home, my wife can tell you, I haven't stopped working since then. I cried, I howled. I told her I must be about my father's business. I'm bone of his bone. I'm here the night, the night, because I need to be about it. I'm 69 years old. He said, you're going to Ohio. <laughs> and I told my wife, I'm going to Ohio. And at first she said, I ain't going, you're going by yourself. I'm not going. <laughs> not happening. 
<laughs> and I said, that, that doesn't stop me. You cannot stop me when my father said, this is where I want you to go. Go get that checkbook. Go, go here. Do this. I delight to do the will of God. I delight. 2 Peter 1, verse 19. We almost done. And so we have the prophetic word confirmed, which you do well to heed as a light that shines in the dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. When the Holy Ghost finished making us a star, making us the light of the world, wow. you do a good thing until she's done. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they do the will of God. And so in closing Malachi 4 verse 2. Malachi 4 verse 2. But to you who fear my name, the son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. And you shall go out and grow fat like star-fed calves. You shall trample the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day that I do this, says the Lord of hosts. Your, your, the illumination of your brightness is all based on doing his will. Some will shine like the sun in its glory. Others will shine like the moon and others like the stars, 1 Corinthians 15 says. So it is in the resurrection. The will of God is your illumination. That day star says, I will give you as much light as you will permit me to do my will in your body. And burnt offerings and sacrifices I have no delight, but let your light shine. I will not put it under the table, but I will put it on top of the table that all may be drawn to them. And they that win souls will shine like the stars in the firmament because the heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament showeth his handiwork and day after day utter speech and there is no place where the Holy Ghost had not given the language that it cannot be heard that God has sent his only begotten son, yes. son in the world that whosoever believe in yes. him yes. should not perish but have everlasting yes. life. He said, we will place the stars up there with the stars down here. So when those stars are shaking and fall, we will take their place. So it is in the resurrection. <laughs> I delight to do thy will, O oh God. Let your light shine and stop hiding the will of God under your table. Today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart. And in that note, I am closing. Amen. And I, I do like I've been doing the last couple of meetings. Anyone have any questions? This